Our next talk, we have a topic, uh, Explore Big Data Using Simple Python Code and Cloud Environment by Hari Krishna Rava. He's working as a performance engineer lead in Accenture. Hi guys, good evening. Uh, my name is Hari Krishna. I am from Accenture. So working as a performance engineering lead, that is my day job. So I, but I, love, I create a lot of Python programs on my own to make improvements in productivity in my project. So as part of that, like even I explored uh, big data and Python and cloud, like why can using mainly on Python, all right? So I just want to share my knowledge on like, you know, uh, so exploring a big, big data using uh, a very simple Python code. It need not be like a, your expert in that and also make use of the cloud, all right? So it's a, a simple agenda I'm just going to follow here. So we'll mainly discuss about, like we'll take an example of a big data set and uh, try to ex explore the data um, and create a, some problem statement on that and also how we cannot do it in a traditional process and uh, instead of that, how we can use a Hadoop map reduce and uh, how we, and also like, uh, using Python code, how you can uh, write program to process the data and uh, later we will uh, talk about Amazon EMR that is the uh, further abstraction like uh, you can uh, you can create entire software as a service and just you need to write your program and submit that's it you need not worry about entire infrastructure so and then we will talk uh, we'll, I'll quickly go through the demo and uh, some interesting stuff later all right So before that, like this is the solution. So instead of talking about problem, like I have the solution pre initially, like you know. So this is the top ten web pages viewed in uh, Wikipedia, English during uh, May month. All right. So you can see something like that. Can you relate that to the month of May? All right. So maybe uh, there's a space flight happened in 2015 something. That may be the reason, like a uh, lot of pages on that. And uh, Falcon 9, I think V1.1, the project got kicked off or something like that. Yep. And uh, second, it's June. Uh, in June month, also, you can just try to relate. Maybe there is a number nine, Game of Thrones. Maybe that is the season five started. Right? or it's a uh, number three. So the in, during August month, these are the top 10 pages viewed in Wikipedia. The first one is the top one is almost like 7 million hits on that nuclear magnetic resource resonance. And also you can just relate to like, uh, there is a presidential campaign is happening. That may be the reason like uh, number nine, Donald Trump, right? And uh, this is the September, so maybe you have a PlayStation 3, something happened in September. And uh, you have maybe Google, maybe they spin up uh, to Alphabet, that may be the reason like uh, you got it with uh, Google, all right? And one thing you can just try to correlate is that, I don't know why, uh, June, you have number five deaths in 2015, and August, you have deaths in 2015. I don't know what the reason, like so many people are hitting on why deaths in 2015, yeah? All right. And in uh, September, again, you can see that Hillary Clinton. So you can just try to relate what's happening in the world versus what are the pages viewed in uh, Wikipedia, all right? So how I got all this data, all right? <coughs> so everyone knows Wikipedia, there is no introduction to that, but think of uh, its Wikipedia is like a voluntarily created data by across the world. You can see that like almost like 49 million articles created in English and all these things, all right? So imagine without Wikipedia, or without a stack workflow or all these things like uh, how search engine should be, will be, right? So chances are there that in your top 10 
pages searched in a Google or any other search engine, chances are there that you will have a Wikipedia on the top, right? Now, so how have we got that? So Wikipedia is like, it's like a non-governmental, non-commercial, and uh, sort of non-profitable organization uh, created by volunteers with funding from across the public, right? And so they have a, they have a freedom to provide everything open data to everyone. Unlike a commercial, they can't disclose how many customers they have or how many uh, users they have or how many hits per second they're getting all these things, all right? So what they do is that they have a, a website in wikipedia.org, so where uh, they, have, they will create hourly log files about what are the um, pages viewed, uh, the page name, and uh, the number of requests in that one hour, and how much size of the data downloaded as part of that week one. And if you see here, the first one, so the first one is uh, the project that is uh, different languages like DE, Dutch, and E in English, ES means Espanol or for France, right? So you have uh, hourly log files. So now imagine like I have uh, hourly log file size of 100 MB in compressor format, and if you uncompress it, it's almost like a, a 400 MB. And uh, in a month, if let us say I want to process the data, for, extract the data from one month, it will be approximately like uh, 24 hours, 31 into 400, that is 300 gig of the data and approximately 5 billion of records, right? So you can do process uh, in a normal, your computer or server or something like that. So that requires a different ballgame. So how traditional process, you can't put it in a large and high speed database. It is expensive and also here we are just talking about 300 GB. Think about like a teradata or petabytes or something like that. So it's expensive and it can't scale as data increases. Similarly like file processing on a high CPU like enterprise, world class servers, like a supercomputer or something like that, okay. So they're also like very expensive and not possible for a normal people and uh, also, if something fails in the 99% completed and 1% failed, you need to rerun the job again. So in both the cases, it is a, ex infrastructure is expensive and takes more time to provide the solution. So, so the solution we have is like, uh, I think everyone knows about how to map reduce, but I just give a quick overview of what is that. So you have, uh, so what we do is that here, like you split the input file into blocks of 64 MB or higher and distribute uh, to the multiple uh, commodity computers. When you say commodity computers, it's like a normal enterprise. It's not a normal enterprise server. It may be any normal computers we have, like a 4G Brown, 4 gig RAM, and uh, normal Intel Pentium chip, something like that, okay? And in the same network, like you distribute the, you, you split the file into the blocks and distribute across the multiple community computers in the same network and uh, process the blocks. So you have the blocks of the data in the data, uh, you call it the data nodes, and uh, you will push the tasks. You will send the tasks processes to execute on the data on the locally instead of like normally in a database means that you will fetch the data and put it in, you process that in your app server, but here it's processing will happen locally, right? And also, you're, you're distributing the data across the multiple nodes. So even if one, when we're doing a parallel processing across the nodes, even if one node fails, you may need to rerun the job again, right? So you will not have an integrity of the data. So the one more solution for this is that you, you replicate the blocks, like instead of one copy of the block, you will distribute across, uh, you, you, copy, you make a two or three copies of that, one copy in one node and another copy in another node. So if one node fails, another, another node is there which will process the data, all right? So that is how Hadoop MapReduce works. All right, this is called uh, Hadoop MapReduce. So the first one we call as a distribution of the files is called HDFS, Hadoop uh, Distributed File Systems. And uh, the next one is that MapReduce, that is the logic you write to process the data on the blocks and get the output. So this is how it works. 
So you have different splits, blocks, and on each block, yeah, the mapper will run, and you will get the output. So let us say you have <coughs> 64 GB, or 64 GB means you have almost like a 1,000 tasks, or 1,000 splits. And on each split, you, you will have a map executed, and you will get an uh, output. And once you got output from all the 1,000 mappers, you will merge them and sort it by a key and give it to the reducer. And the reducer will aggregate the data and push it to the output. So that is how the parallel processing happens in the Hadoop MapReduce. So, <coughs> so you need to write a mapper and reducer, we call as. So the Hadoop MapReduce normally most of the uh, written in Java, and most of the programs will, write, uh, will be written in Java. But due to the popularity or something else, like they allow Python and Ruby, uh, uh, you can write the programs. And there is a Hadoop, Hadoop streaming. So that is an EAPI for non-Java programs. So uh, that is uh, exposed, and you can just write the program, and you make use of the API. So how the API works is that. So you will have, uh, they'll expose the blocks as a standard input to the, your mapper. And, uh, and then uh, once you get the output, the output is written into the standard output of the Unix. And that's how it happens, right? So now we'll just look into the how we written the input. So well, this problem statement, like how you solve it. So this is the format of the your input file, so which is uh, space delimited with four columns, uh, with one. So now I need to extract the data in English, and I just need only the page name and the number of requests. So column number two and three. I don't require one and four. So that is how the mapper does. Like you just filter the data with English, and uh, it's a very simple one, okay? So it's only like uh, six lines of the seven lines of the program you are written. And uh, you just filter it out that, okay, whether it is a uh, frequency is greater than 100. So why I choose a frequency is greater than 100 is that normally in your top 10, you will not have a hundred, uh, it definitely more than thousands. So I just filtered more than 100 and uh, project is English, that's what you extract the data and that is the mapper output. Then you have a shuffle. Shuffle will be taken care of by the Hadoop map reduce. You need not write anything for that. So uh, if you see here, like uh, you need to give the mapper output in a tab, de tab, delimited, uh, tab delimited key and value pair. So what shuffle does is that it will match all the output and uh, sort it by the key here the key is the first column, that is the uh, page name, and you have, it will just sort it out by that. So that is out reducer input. So you can see here like, the, so the same, for, for example, you are processing the data from the multiple uh, hourly log files. So each log file, multiple log files can have the same keyword. So that's why you see that in the output you have the two instances of a, a keyword, and uh, another two instances of a keyword zip code. So this is how the out input to the your reducer. Then you have the, uh, then what you need to do is that you just need to sum up. Like you just read the line, line by line, and the first uh, till you encounter the next keyword, you just read it out and you sum up all the values and you just give it. That is a reducer written, it is a bit, uh, complicated than the mapper, but it's easy one. So you just try to get the output. That is, uh, uh, you just uh, aggregate by each keyword, like what is the total sum. That is the output. So from there, you can pick up the data, and you can just sort it by your values, and you get the output. So that's how your how you mapper and reducer is written. right? So the only thing you need to do is that you just need to write your mapper and reducer yeah, Hadoop map reducer will not, will take care of the Hadoop book, um, entire logic of like splitting the files, put distributing them, and taking care of the tasks execution, and ensure that 100% completion of the data um, job, and you get the output. You need not worry about anything else, right? 
So, but, but still, you need to write, uh, uh, you need to create infrastructure. Like you have something called a master node and core node, data nodes. Data nodes are the ones you put the data and you process the data. And you have the master node which will keep track of where my files are distributed and also where, how I am assigning the tasks to each of the, um, each of the data node and keep track of like all the tasks are completed or not. So, so still you need to install the software, you need to configure your master node and core nodes we call as uh, data nodes and that is a very plenty of effort requires even though Hadoop MapReduce provides a lot of emphasis uh, in the bolts and nuts, still you need to configure it. So for a beginner like me, if I want to, ex my main aim is uh, to explore the data rather than do not worry about uh, what inside, like how much effort required to create the infrastructure for me. So for that, so you have Amazon Cloud. I think everyone is aware of the Amazon Cloud. So they have Amazon EMR, Elastic Map Reducer. So which is the service provided by the Amazon where you just need to define how many master node, uh, how many core nodes you require and what type of the instance. We call it in EC2 is the virtual server they call as EC2, so EC2 instance type. So you have a different types of the instances in uh, Amazon. So I'll just show you. So these are the different uh, types of the instances they have. So by, by each one is having a different CPU number of CPUs, RAM, and uh, hard disk based on that they will charge per hour basis like this. So if I'm just see, for example, C3 to X large, which is approximately around uh, uh, 28 CPU and uh, around 800 GB hard disk SSD and uh, almost like uh, 50 or something like that GB of RAM. So that costs almost like uh, $0.4 per hour, right? So, sorry, okay. So you just need to give them and it, uh, the Amazon will take care of uh, configuring the cluster for me. Then next what I need to give, do is that I just need to provide where is my mapper program, where is my reducer program, and where is my input file location, folder location, and where I want the output location, that's it. Even I need not log into that cluster and do anything on that. Right, so it's as as simple as like you have a GUI, you just need to click, and self-explanatory, you just give the mapper, reducer, all these things. That's it, and that's it. Okay, so this is a sort of like a theory part. Now let's go and do a quick demo on that. So you, before going into that, uh, in Amazon you have something called S3, that is the place you store your data. It is like a extern extension to your hard disk. It can act as a like hard disk to your virtual server created in your Amazon. So they they call it like a buckets. Okay, so you create your own bucket. It is a uh, unique across uh, the world of the users. So I created a bucket called perf test map and I created an input file, input folder, and I just downloaded all the data from the Wikipedia. So all the files, like uh, I created a one instance, uh, I created one virtual server like uh, uh, in uh, EC2, that is like virtual server, and just downloaded the files uh, to the EC2. It is a free of cost. Like think of like you download 300 GB of data into your local mission. So instead of think of like how much bandwidth it will cost for you. So but here like you can just download free of cost. The bandwidth is completely free. Downloading anything from the internet to the your Amazon. So I was not. I haven't paid even a single rupee for downloading the data from the Wikipedia. So I downloaded all the files and uncompressed them and push into the S3. So this is my input folder, and I created another folder called output, yeah, and all right. 
This is fine. Thank you. All right. So I created an input folder or output folder where I want the output and where I have the scripts. So whatever I showed you the script, I just put that in the mapper and reducer. That's it. So now I'll just go to the elastic map reducer. So I'll just do the cluster, create cluster. And I will just give the names, all these things. And then So I just need to give what is my configuration. So if you can see here, like uh, you have a different types of the instance types. So they have a compute optimized, memory optimized, and storage optimized. If you see the different configuration of that, I, um, Okay, uh, it will take a few seconds to load the pricing data. Yeah. <coughs> so you can see here like uh, T2 micro is the very smallest one where you have the memory of one gig and it costs approximately one rupee per hour versus uh, the top most is almost like uh, C38 X large, which is 32 CPU, 60 GB, and 620 S GB SSD, which costs almost like this much. Okay, all right. So I just need to provide the how much uh, si uh, how many number of uh, instances I need for core, and then. I just need to, as I mentioned previously, like uh, I just need to select my step as a streaming program, configure and add, and I just need to give my location where my mapper script is there, and where my reducer script is there. And where is my input file? So let us say I want uh, input file and September and I just select it and I just need to give the output location. So this S3 will be there even though your server is decom you have terminate or something which is available for you. So it is as if like your Google Drive or something. So I just need to create uh, another output, September five, September output. That's it, and I just need to click on add, right? So once I do the add, then what happens is because it takes some time, um, almost like a, I haven't okay, I haven't done that. So it takes almost like eight minutes to provision that hardware for you and configure it, right? Which I already created the cluster for this demo. So I already created a cluster. with uh, C32 X large of six nodes each. There are six core nodes and one uh, for master node. And I just need to add the steps here. So since morning, I'm just running a different jobs. Uh, one is uh, all the September files, top 10 French pages, or top 10 uh, Dutch pages, all these things. So currently, uh, all July Dutch job is running, so I can just show the jobs and view the tasks. 
so which is a bit misleading, but what you can say is that you have a almost like 11, 1173 pending tasks. So it will show all the mapper and runner, um, mapper and reducer is work executing here. So it will show most of the data for you. So even if you see here, uh, mm, jobs, So I can, this is the one previously, com okay, this is the one previously completed for all Jolie French. So I can see the output of that. So if you see syslog, which will tell me, which will show you like a quick log of like, you know, it is just executing 78%, 79%, all these things, and it will give you the quick metrics of like uh, how many, uh, how many bytes read, how many bytes written, and uh, you can see here like this many input records are processed for as part of that, almost like a five billion uh, records processed, and these are the output records we got it. So all the metrics, it will be provided. So, and also like Hadoop Map Reduce um, provides a web interface. So what, uh, what you just need to do is that you do, you need to do the SSH tunneling to the Mm, the master node, which I already did, and uh, this is the Hadoop interface, Hadoop web connector ap application. So there you can see what is the current job and what is the current status. So if I see here, wait a minute. So this is the job currently we are executing. So so you can see that uh, how many of total and. Uh, and how many are pending, how many are running. You can just see the completed ones. And it takes some time to download. So you can see that what exactly it is doing and how much time it took. You can see that each mapper task is executed for 10 seconds approximately. And you can see some counters. Like when you define a map, there is a by default, there is a mappers, uh, mapper uh, definition like uh, this much of the memory I need to be allocated to each mapper task. All these are the by default values. You can also change that values and you need not, for that you need not log into the cluster and configure it. You just need to change it from their UI only. So these are the different counters and uh, uh, these are, this whichever, which, whatever I showed you in the syslog. And also these are the different configuration parameters. You can see that almost like uh, there are 716 parameters in the Hadoop which you can configure, like what is a block size. So one more uh, important thing is that we normally like uh, the block size in Hadoop is more than 64 MB. The reason is that uh, if you, uh, the time to seek from the hard disk should be less than the time you took to read the file, entire file. You should not have more of overhead on your seek time. So that is the reason uh, you, we give minimum 64 MB and the block size can increase further. But you can configure like, so initially I, I did a trial and error, like I gave a different types of the nodes, different types and how I will see that, okay, is it like a memory intensive or it is like a CPU intensive, all these things you just need to monitor trial and error and come up with a uh, optimized number of nodes and what type of the uh, instance type I need to have. Is it like uh, how much memory I need to have and what is what should be my memory per each mapper task? All these things we need to configure it. All right. So, so th that's uh, about the uh, demo. So that's how I got the output. So I, here you can see that uh, I haven't uh, done any configuration or anything. I just need to write a mapper and reducer and I used my local Py, IPython to test it against that. So uh, I tested against the local IPython and the mapper and reducer and put it there, that's it. And uh, I need not log into any machine and do the color configuration of anything else, okay? So that is the beauty of this. So, <coughs> so that's it on the demo. 
Now, this is the one uh, I learned in one of the online course. There is something called the Simpson's paradox. So, what exactly it tells is that, like, you know, so depends upon how deep you are looking into the data, the uh, insights of the data will change. All right? So, because now going forward, we will be uh, le we will be exploring in your day job, uh, day in day out job, you will be dealing with most of the data, like a huge data, and how to interpret the data is very important. So, if you, this is called Simpson paradox. If you see the example here, I think everyone can see here, like uh, there's an, a university uh, where you have uh, two major courses, major A and major B, and you have uh, people applied for from different gender. And if you see major A and major B, you can see that acceptance rate is uh, higher um, for one gender versus another gender. But if you combine both of them, right? If you just look into like combine both the major A and major B and project uh, your acceptance rate, my acceptance rate uh, will reverse it, right? So now you can see that the different gender have the higher acceptance rate than the other gender. So this is called uh, Simpson's paradox. So that should be very important if you, you know, looking into the data in your day-to-day -day job, right? So uh, using, uh, this, is, this is one of the information I extracted from the Wikipedia, but there are n number of uh, insights you can get it from Wikipedia because it is a more of accurate information representing uh, what is the user's currently uh, trying to do it in the internet. And using that, you can make use of a lot of applications on top of that and uh, make use of that as the inputs. Uh, other than that, there is one more uh, community driven. So the Wikipedia is also like a community driven website. Similarly, like there is another community driven big data set we have. I, th I don't know whether everyone knows about this. There is something called uh, indiarailinfo.com. So it is also like a, a community driven uh, by data set. So, okay, I think you guys can see that. So I'm trying to search, this is a community driven, even we don't know like who's the founder for that website. So it gives like, you just give the source and destination, like I want to go from Bangalore to Chennai, it will give you uh, the different uh, trains with start time and, and time, arrival and departure time with the, what is the average delay uh, of arrival and departure. And also, you have the community, uh, community users, like volunteers. They will create uh, other paths. For example, like uh, in, you can, you, there is a train which goes directly from Bangalore to Chennai. That is what you will see in the top two records. It's actually it's a Bangalore to Pondicherry. But the other ones are created by the community. Say that, okay, you can go from Bangalore to some Madurai and from Madurai to another one with a delay of this much. All these things are created by the community, okay? It's a very big, huge data set. If people want to explore it, it's very, uh, very accurate information, and you can get a lot of insights on that, okay? So I'll just give you one example here. So <clears throat> I'll just try to give the difference between uh, that community-driven uh, website versus a commercial travel aggregator. So think of like I'm going to, from Chennai to Bangalore. So is it make sense to go through via Mumbai with a wait time of 18 hours? So that's what your uh, commercial travel aggregator will provide, which is no, making no sense, right? So when you try to search for Bangalore, Chennai to Bangalore, it doesn't make sense, uh, uh, sir, Bangalore to Chennai, it doesn't make sense to go travel to Mum Mumbai and from there, wait overnight and come back in another flight. But where, I, see it is almost like 18 hours plus almost like three hours. So you're taking 20 hours to travel from one place to another place, which is hardly takes six hours even by train, right? That, that is a normal commercial travel aggregator, which is mainly depends upon like you do the data mining and provide the information. Whereas uh, a community website uh, like uh, indiarailinfo.com, you can see that the maximum wait time is almost like less than four hours when I'm trying to get from uh, Bangalore to, sorry, which one, uh, Pondicherry, right? 
So if you can see the last but column, that is the users, the community who created, the user created that row of the data, right? Yep. Okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yep. So uh, that's it. Okay, I'm done. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I'm done with my presentation. So these are the tools I used it, and you can get a. There is a GitHub link, which this link is already available in your Python so PyCon uh, proposal. You can get it, and uh, you can get all the step by steps right from install creating the account in Amazon AWS and right from uh, installing the Python, IPython, all the tools on the, all the steps are available there. You can also explore um, big data using that. So that's it from my side. So if anyone have any questions, please yeah. let me know. Any questions? Yeah. Um, so you said uh, for the English data, there's, there's 300 GB of data, right? Sorry? Uh, for English English data from Wikipedia. Exactly. Uh, how long did it take to process the entire 300 GB? Uh, even now it is running. So, okay, it took uh, almost like it depends upon how many nodes you give. So, due to some other budget constraints and other things, I just gave six nodes because it is scalable. If I give, uh, so if I gave only six nodes of this type, so it took uh, hardly 40 minutes, 46 minutes, something like that. And Hadoop map reduce is linearly scalable. If I give almost like a, instead of six nodes, you can give 12 nodes, it can process in 20 minutes. At the same cost, right? No. Uh, no, you're as in pay, uh, more machines, to, lesser time. Yeah, so. actually Amazon pay, uh, uh, asks you to pay per hour, whereas maybe I hit the, the other cloud guys are giving per second also. Your next question. Anyone? Questions? Uh, hi. Third row here. Yeah. Hi. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, how well does uh, Python work uh, when using Hadoop when compared to Java? Yeah, actually, even I did some research on this. But anyway, I don't know the Java and all. But uh, for a normal text processing and all, it is comparatively OK. But uh, it's uh, performance-wise, it is, uh, you know, Mm, it is on the downside. But for me, the car doesn't matter for me as a like, but still you can do a lot of tuning on this part. Yeah, I need to still work on that. Thank you for the session. And uh, I have one question here. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in my uh, organization, I have seen people using the live Twitter uh, feeds and created beautiful uh, websites or apps using the AngularJS or something. So uh, is it also, uh, does it use the uh, MapReduce to process the Twitter live feeds, or how is it? Uh, I don't know much about that. But okay. I, what I feel is that uh, they call it like a spark storm and all these things. Okay, the okay. main uh, fundamental concepts is still you have a, like a Hadoop ma MapReduce. Yeah. That's what I feel. Okay? Oh, okay, but okay. I, I'm not the expert to comment on that. All right, thank you. And still, I'm a learner. Okay? Any questions? Questions, guys? OK. OK, so that's it. All right. Thanks very much. And you have you know, udacity.com, like most of your data science courses and all of the things you can learn in udacity.com. Most of that website uh, tutorials are based on Python, whether it is a, uh, analytics, whether it is a, like artificial intelligence, or robotics, whatever it is, mostly it is, uh, they will give a demo in Python. Okay, small announcement. At 4.45, we are having a feedback session. So guys, you can stay and give all this your feedback, how was it and all that. Until that time, we are having a lightning talk. If anyone wants to give, please come ahead. If anyone wants to give, please come ahead. Come on, guys. Uh, for this uh, writing talk, we won't be having the uh, projector set up. You just need to come here and talk. That's it. For three minutes. I'm here to talk. Good evening. Good evening. So exhausted.
एनर्जी गाइस एनर्जी गुड इवनिंग चाय नहीं पी मिली नहीं चाय चाय मिली ओके सो आई एम हियर टू जस्ट शेयर एन एक्सपीरियंस एंड एंड द आई गॉट द पॉइंट्स ऑफ हियर एंड यू डोंट गिव मी स्लाइड्स ओके सो वाई डिड यू गाइज the the talk the talk is about how to uh, how to get the most out of pycon and how to have a good time over here so uh, most of you came here with an expectation of having uh, of uh, getting to attend very great talks and having uh, awesome like you know getting to learn i don't know everything that is there to learn in just 3 or 4 just 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 two days with two hour within two hour sessions probably get an expertise in hadoop and maybe learn everything that is there to know about meta programming uh, to be very fair uh, that's quite impossible you'll get a basic idea but not the whole deal that requires a lot of effort so my strategy in attending pycon and you know having getting to know and getting to you know having a good time over here is is to follow a couple of you know mantras uh, what i try to do is interact with people as much as i can make friends just bump into random strangers and say hello hey who are you what do you do i mean just you might just make very good friends you might get to know about people who are doing great work in their own offices and um, are changing the world probably and uh, you know that could be a very good experience other than that knowing people and getting known yourself can help you not only solve your problems in personal life as in the personal technical problems that you face at your job but also in uh, you know getting job opportunities me people are looking for good talent every time not just the sponsors but almost everyone who is working in any job is looking for good talent to get into their team i know i am and i mean that that's a universal problem get good talent so if people know you that you're great you'll you'll land in multiple job offers you'll be drowning in job offers if you're well known so i'll wrap it in three and okay right. and uh, apart from the hiring thing having a good time and being a part of the initiative is a uh, you know is a is a golden opportunity you get uh, out of pycon because it's a voluntary or uh, voluntary initiative so uh, you have an opportunity to be a part of the organizing team you can help out in any which way which you can like you think you can help out with the network before cursing out loud sala net hi chal raha hai bekar log hai kuch nahi karte net nahi chala sakte yaar kya kar rahe hain conference kaisi conference kar rahe hain bhai aa jao come along we will we'll welcome you if you can help us out your ss admin you know how to set up routers you know how to lay, lay out cables come along help us you think the talk selection was bad pathetic boring talks we were selected this time be a part of the talk selection committee next time it's people like you who are doing it so well why not you just be a part of it and uh, well in any which way so well hopefully hopefully you had a good time this this year and you'll be a better i'm you will you'll involve more self you are more yourself more in the next year and we'll make this is it was good i'm pretty sure we'll have a better pycon next year as well thank you okay the next talk uh, quick 3 minutes talk please yeah hello uh, my name is vamsi uh, yes uh, my name is vamsi uh, there are many talks on natural language processing but i wanted to keep it uh, more simple we are working on all basic stuff so i would like to share my experience uh, about natural language processing a few days back we were working on a project called news aggregator uh, the thing is that uh, we were taking xml feeds from various sites like hindu deccan chronicle times of india various things okay you you keep on uh, so then after taking the xml feeds we are just filtering out of all the titles out of the xml feeds using Bo beautiful soup 4 and the beautiful soup is a extraordinary library for filtering out all those things and after that we were in a state of filtering all those things like we want to stack similar items at one spot so for that for that we have been thinking about about various libraries which are available at that stage i went along with nltk so uh okay there is a problem with the projector so i took the nltk uh we were on nltk and we got segmentation tokenizing and poi tagging of uh, uh, the title only title as the projector is not working i can't uh, show you that and uh, the second stage was we used a uh, nav based classifier for stacking up items 
And we have a couple of even uh, other libraries called text blob, even in, inside our engine. Uh, but the only thing I, I sh thought of showing you that, the only thing in the production when we want to release that is NLTK is too slow. It's almost taking 12 seconds of time to just import that library. So for that reason, I would also recommend libraries like Pattern, Text Blob, and Genesim. Even Genesim is used for uh, similar sentence recognition. So that's for it. So who aren't with uh, NLTK, they can also use other libraries called this Text Blob. And the Text Blob is on the shoulders of uh, both NLTK and Pattern. Go also try Text Blob. That's, thank you.